Why? I don't want to look like it. I'm like, um, too important. Good morning, everyone. <laughs> Kyle's on his phone. No, I just... <laughs> I'm just kidding. He's paying my copay. Copay. He, that's his way he flirts with me. He, <laughs> it's true, huh? It is. He, he pays my copay before I go into my appointments. So then when I check in, they say, oh, oh. <laughs> you've already paid your copay? And then the first time, the first few times he did it, I was caught off guard and all happy because he did that. <laughs> and so now he has to keep it up. He forgot like once. And, it, and I said, oh, honey, I had to pay my copay. <laughs> And he was all embarrassed. <laughs> so thank you for paying my copay. You're welcome. Day, day. So today's chemo day. I'm really dreading it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> Last night I fell asleep with the kids while putting them down to bed. Um, I think you did that last, last time chemo well. too, so it must be a strategy. I don't know. I was just, You're running away. I was running away from having to like pack and get ready for chemo mm -hmm. last night. So then Kyle came in the room and got me because, you know, if I lay flat, I get pain. And so he came and got me and I just didn't even talk. I just went, <laughs> went, straight, to <laughs> went bed. straight to bed. And you had to get everything ready for chemo and clean the house. So thank you. I appreciate you. Of course. I'm a little nervous that I'm going to get denied chemo today because I have a weird thing going on with my hands. I don't know if you can tell. I took off one nail polish because they check my oxygen through this finger. So ever, ever since they had now. issues that day, I take off one nail polish fin or finger. Um, yeah, you can't really tell as much. It doesn't really show on camera. My hands are kind of swollen and they're really um, itchy. And then it's like particularly itchy on the knuckles. Um, two nights ago, I woke up in the middle of the night with the palms of my hands itching so badly and the bottom of my feet itching so badly. And it went away for the most part during the day but my hands and feet were a little extra itchy and then um last night or this morning this morning i woke up at about five with my hands just burning and itching but it wasn't the palms this time it was the outside and the skin just feels tight feels like it's swelling so i have to show my team and ask Ask what they think. Hopefully they won't deny me chemo. I don't know if it's a reaction to something. I don't know what. I have this rash. It's like left over from last chemo. We tried to go without the steroid that is given to me on chemo day and the day after at home. We tried to skip it to see what would happen and a rash came. So they said to that I need it. So there's that. The deeper I'm getting into all of these chemos, the more I'm dreading it. I don't know why. I get really sad and down. It's like my body and mind know what's to come, like that I'm gonna feel really sick. They know that, that it sucks. <laughs> it's been a long time. I don't know. Last, my last chemo was my first one of this new regimen and it was definitely better than with carboplatin in the mix. I don't think I got a true test because the first night of chemo, after chemo, I pulled an all-nighter for River's birth. So I feel like it set me off to almost struggle a little more. Mm -hmm. I think this time hopefully I can get a fair shot of seeing what this new regimen looks like, yeah. the recovery. I think it's gonna be better because it was already better. Um, but I'm hoping it'll be even better. We'll yeah. see. I don't want to go to chemo. I have to go to the room where he's not allowed again. That's where I'm scheduled. It's like the overflow room. Oh. You ready? I'm ready. You get to go to my other appointments with me. Yep. Like see the doctor. And... Doctor in blood. Thank goodness. I don't want to go in. And we'll just pray that they don't deny you. 
And the and kids are, or our kids are with my dad. And what? Is he texting us? Oh no. Um, just hope we don't get denied. Hope we can get this done. Yeah. And if we do get denied, then we'll go home. Whatever's meant to be, <laughs> will be. That's right. I had a dream about cancer. It's always a good time. I've been having nightmares since tapering on the steroids. Did I tell you guys I started tapering again? I started tapering on my steroids again. Okay. And it's kicking my butt. I'm having fatigue, headaches, um, nightmares, fatigue, headache, nightmares. Itchy hands, no. Itchy hands, apparently. <laughs> there was something else I can't remember. Muscle aches and pains? Headaches? My body aches. But. Fatigue. Hopefully I get to taper again today. We'll see. Yep. Hopefully I get to taper again. A slow taper. We'll see. I wonder if someone has an office that like points to where I do my little my little runways. And they go, oh, runway girl is here again. Oh, check this out, guys. Everybody, come here. Guys, come runway here. girl is here check again. Check it out. Now her husband's <laughs> even doing it. <laughs> you didn't do it. No, I didn't. Let's see your look. Oh, beautiful. He's got all the things. When we were in the parking lot, we saw two dragonflies. <laughs> and? <laughs> I liked that. I, know. I enjoyed seeing two dragonflies. It's cute. I have this delicious looking snack from my cousin Tracy. These look really good. Thank you, Tracy. Hello everyone, we are out of chemo. I was approved. My doctor wasn't worried about my hands. My team wasn't. Um, it could be a side effect of chemo or of tapering off of steroids. So it's just another fun thing to add to my resume. <laughs> <laughs> what else did they say? I can continue tapering. So I'm going to drop by one milligram today on my steroids. They, they want to do it by one now. A week. One milligram per week. They were happy with your bronchoscopy results. Mm -hmm. We already knew that, but they kind of just confirmed it. 
so what they you had a stand of uh, an observer doctor today from Brazil which is kind of mm -hmm. cool and what he was there last time too uh, and what he said basically and I think what Salguia said is now that they've ruled out everything from the bronch it looks like your lung is just inflamed which could be from chemo could be from the tapering my lung just sucks yeah <laughs> so there's nothing crazy going on in it which is great mm -hmm. stay on that path all right my camera ran out of room so i just delete some footage um so everything went well everyone at city of hope was amazing as always i feel really yuck it is so weird going to chemo anyone who goes to chemo or has been through this knows like it's so triggering, all the smells and tastes and everything, feelings, it's all just so yuck. So I feel like I need to lay down. I have like this new thing last last chemo and now I felt it again this chemo where I get this strong desire to have like comfort food and a Christmas movie <laughs> or a Halloween movie. So maybe we can all watch a Christmas movie tonight. Mm -hmm. I would enjoy that. Um, it's just where I don't like chemo. I don't enjoy it at all. And I just want to do things that make me feel better because I don't like it. Having you there was nice. Yeah, it was nice. Kyle was petting me during chemo. Mm -hmm. My sweetie. <laughs> nurse was really nice. Mm, nurse was really nice. Yeah. It was great. She likes Disney like us. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, oh, and then um, the doctor from Brazil who is like working with my doctor right now, he said that my weight gain can definitely cause, you know, more work for me because I've had, you know, 60 plus pounds of weight gain. He said that's like carrying a 60 pound backpack all the time. So that increases, or that doesn't help with my shortness of breath, yeah. with my muscle loss. Your heart, everything. My heart, everything, yeah. So he recognized that. Another perk of the weight gain, I know there's so many perks, they had to up my chemo dose because <laughs> I'm getting bigger and <laughs> every time I come, my weight is up. Literally, my weight has been going up nonstop since I started steroids. It is the weirdest thing I've ever experienced. You moved up to a new tier. Things. <laughs> We're proud of you. Soon I'm gonna catch up to my honey bunny. I'm gonna weigh the same as him, but that's okay. You'll love me, right? Of course. Everything went well. Yep, it's a good day. Stronger dose of chemo. Yay. No, you probably feel sick tonight. I feel sick right now. <laughs> I'm gonna close my eyes on the way home. We got a lot of traffic in a two hour nap. Yeah, we'll probably stuck probably be stuck in traffic and we're gonna go get the kids. I really miss them. I was thinking about Ellis and Winnie while I was in my chair getting my infusion. I miss you guys. I love you guys so much. We have the best kids on the planet. We do, hands down. Yeah, and you're the best honey bunny. I love you. All right, let's go. Coping with cancer the best way I know how. In my Disney sweatshirt, enjoying time with my kids. Hi, babies. I can't take her on the Sunday. On the Sunday? All right, how do I prop my camera? Let's see. Mom, can I eat this yogurt more? Yeah, you can eat more yogurt. Here are the other snacks that Tracy got me. This one, it's dark chocolate with raspberry quinoa, raspberry and quinoa. Looks delicious, thank you. No, it doesn't. And then two candy bars. Mm. My weird nail. <laughs> two candy bars. Raspberry and dark chocolate. Thank you, Tracy. I am in my room hiding on the side of my bed 
next to my oxygen tank and this oxygen thing. I don't even know what it's called. I am hiding because I'm sad and I don't want the kids to see me sad. I'm sad because I have stage 4 cancer and I don't want it and I'm afraid that it's going to take me from my kids and my husband sooner than I would like and I'm just sad about it and I'm scared and I'm determined to beat cancer and live as long as I can. I honestly think me living life the way I do, making the best of it and enjoying life as much as I can while I'm here, is beating cancer. So <laughs> even if, you know, worst case scenario happens, in my, in my book, I'm already beating cancer because it's not stopping me from living a beautiful life with my kids and my husband. <laughs> I may not be able to do as much as I used to and things might be harder for me but I'm still living a great life and enjoying it as much as I can making the most of each moment cancer is just really sad and really hard I've spent the past week or so writing in birthday cards or life event cards for the kids I have a lot to write in. <laughs> um, when the cancer spread to my brain, uh, my cousins, Trish, Tracy, and Stacy, went and got a whole bunch of cards, milestone cards, for me to write in for the kids. And it's such a sweet thought. Um, they got the idea from my cousin Tracy's in-law and she's an oncologist, a wonderful oncologist, and she suggested doing this. She said everyone should do it, even if you don't have cancer. If you're a parent, you should do this because you never know when you're going to go, and the best thing you can leave behind are your words or your voice or something like that <laughs> just for your kids. So my cousins got me a bunch of cards for my kids, and I bought more cards because once they got me started on it, <laughs> the like snowball effect effect happened where I then wanted a card for this and a card for that. And you know, when he's first period and when they get engaged and when they get married and when they become parents and different birthdays. And so I have a bunch of cards I've been filling out for them and it's nice to know I'm leaving things behind for if worst case scenario happens but it's sad it's really sad to write to them as if I'm not going to be here for their 10th birthdays or getting promoted to middle school it's really sad imagining them having to go through all this without a mother but I'm doing it because I love them and if worst case scenario happens I want them to have these cards for mommy and like my cousin said and her in-law said if I'm here for those events then I just give them the card and I'm here <laughs> you know congrats on getting promoted to sixth grade or whatever it is so I hope to be here for all of those life events. I'm determined to be here, but these give me some peace of mind so that I can, it's weird, it's like when I do these sad tasks that hurt my heart, it it's better for me, it's therapeutic because I kind of like check it off the list and it's out of my mind. So I feel like once I complete all the cards that I want to do, I'll feel some peace of mind because each, each time I finish a chunk of them, I feel better. <sighs> this is just really hard and sad. And so I'm hiding on the side of my bed crying. It's so hard.
the hardest part of it is imagining my babies having to go through this kind of a loss. I don't mean to fixate on it. I try my best not to. One of my friends who also has lung cancer, he posted how it's hard not to think about it just today. So I know I'm not alone in thinking about when I'm gonna go. I know people even with without cancer think about it. It's just really scary when I have cancer in my brain and my lung. It's just like, <laughs> it's just staring me in the face. I feel like I'm knocking on heaven's door. Not a good feeling. <laughs> and I think um, I have a brain MRI this month in September to check on the status of the cancer in my brain. So that's getting thoughts going. I'm terrified for that. And the tapering of the prednisone makes me feel really anxious, like out of my control anxious. And it makes me feel really down and depressed. And so sad thoughts pop in my head and I get really scared. I'm trying my best to cope with it. Thanks for letting me cry to you guys. <sighs> I'm so grateful for you guys. I was wondering, I was thinking to myself <laughs> in the shower the other day, like, why do you love doing YouTube so much? Because I really do love it. And one, it's just a hobby for me, editing videos. I find it really fun. Two, you know, I'm leaving behind memories for my kids and my husband to look back on this journey and for myself even if I'm here. Three, I feel like I have a good support system here, a great support system here. In real life, I'm like afraid to say these things to people, like what I'm feeling, because I'm afraid to be a burden to people. I can't help it, I just am afraid of that. And so when people say, how are you doing? I'm usually going to say, I'm okay, or I'm fine. You know, I feel sick, but I'm okay. Because I don't want to burden people. I, are other people like that? I can't be the only one. I just feel bad. I don't want to unload on someone if they're not. I don't know if they want to hear all this, or I don't want to put the weight of cancer on other people but when I upload a video onto YouTube I'm not pushing it on anyone it's just whoever wants to come listen they come listen and come support they're choosing to be here you're choosing to be here and it means so much to me when you come and listen and support me and leave encouragement and prayers and kind words it makes me feel so good and I don't feel like I'm burdening you because I feel like you're choosing to be here. If you don't want to be here, you won't come, you know? You won't come watch the video. And so then I feel like those people aren't being burdened with this. So I don't feel guilty. <laughs> so I realized that's part of why I like doing these videos so much. Because whoever wants to come be a part of this journey and support me and listen to the real ins and outs of cancer they'll be here you'll be here and if you don't want to watch it you don't have to you won't come so i feel it makes me feel like i'm not burdening people when i when i unload here <laughs> so thank you for letting me unload thank you for listening to me thank you for supporting me it means so much i cannot tell you how much you guys help me with your encouragement and your kindness it means so much to me. All right. I feel better after letting that out. Getting that out. Now I'm going to go do bedtime with the kids. That should be nice. That cheers me up. And after bedtime, get some time with my honey bunny. <laughs> You're in a 
The computer, it's at antennae. <laughs> Ellis and Kyle are doing a reading quiz in the living room. I don't know if you guys can hear it. Antennae. And Ellis read a book about ants, so now he's taking a quiz. Ants, that's not my favorite. They're not your favorite? What are your favorite? Um, kitty cats. Kitty cats are your favorite? Mm -hmm. And Flower has a stick. She's a classic dog. I'm a classic dog. All right, Winnie and I are on a mission to find Baby Yoda, correct? This is Meow Meow. This was her favorite stuffed animal for a really long time, and she used to carry it everywhere. Do you remember Meow Meow? meow? Mm -hmm. Do you love Meow Meow? Mm -hmm. But now we're looking for Baby Yoda. She went to bed with it. And it's gone, so we're looking in her bed for Baby Yoda. This is what Ellis <laughs> and Winnie were reading last night when they were supposed to be sleeping. <laughs> and Winnie cried when I said it was time to put it away. This is like their cheat book for staying up late. They'll, they, we have a few of these, 1,000 animals, 1,000 insects, different books. And um, they'll, they could sit and look at this for so long. They love these. But now we're finding Baby Yoda. Hi Shiloh, you wanna come help us? Hi. <laughs> Where is that toy, Baby Yoda? Mom, yeah. I have a knife. Baby Yoda? No, but a Pokeball. Yeah. Here's a Baby Yoda, but not the one we're looking for. Here's a baby Yoda, but not the one we're looking for. Bless you. Winnie and Ellis have a baby Yoda obsession. Mom, my progress is 90%. 90%? Great job, Ellis. What'd you get on this quiz? Okay. Baby Yoda. I found baby Yoda. Mommy, I got a three out of three. You got a three out of three? Great what job. How did at, how did you enjoy the book? I loved it. I did all stars. I do all stars in all books. At. So Ellis gives the book a rating when he does the quiz. He gives the book a rating and he gave it all stars. What was it, four stars or five stars? I think it's four. Four stars? All right, we have a big selection of books to choose from. He's actually floating. <laughs> We have so many of these Disney books. One of Kyle's students gave him this whole collection from when he was a kid. He got permission from his mom to give them to Kyle so that, no, no. He got permission from his mom to give these to Kyle for um, us to read with Ellis. So we love these and we cherish these. These are so amazing. These books are from Jericho and we are so grateful.